I want to be able to give my kids mm. the ability to live out their dreams without the worry the fin- mm. of financial muscle. Not that we want to build them to be lazy individuals, but having uh, financial muscle allows you to explore your dreams and your passions yeah. a lot easier. Mm. Hi, hello, and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. As you know, for the month of August, I am chatting to amazing, empowered women. And today is no different. Do not forget, we bring you amazing content every weeknight this week. We've got Zamantun Guacamala with the Private Property Podcast. That's Monday to Friday live at 7 p.m. And of course, if you're interested in farming and agriculture, we've got Mbali on your screens every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. And of course, I'm on your screens every Wednesday night. And for the month of August, I am chatting to amazing women. So this is definitely something you do not want to miss. And last but not least, Chad Viveros is traveling around Johannesburg, visiting a amazing homes every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. And without further ado, an absolutely amazing woman is sitting with me today in this gorgeous home over here, Lulu Mutikira. Good evening, how are you? Good evening, Esti. Thank you so much for inviting us into the space. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Let's jump straight into it. I want to find out from you what inspired you to go on this journey of interior designing. You know, Esti, I've always been very good at at making spaces beautiful. Mm. I mean, I did up my first flat and everybody thought I had gotten it professionally done. Um, And then friends started asking me to do their homes and to make their spaces beautiful. And so I I, I knew that I had a knack for it. But uh, fast forward a couple of years, I broke my ankle and really couldn't work, couldn't do anything. And so what I did is I took up interior design as a course. Um, And like they say, the rest is history, really. Mm. Friends then started offering to pay me to do their homes. Um, and I realized that this is something I want to do for my life and I quit corporate and here we are now six years later Wow six years that's you know so obviously you went and started your own business which we'll get to a little bit later because I feel like it's so important for us to even educate people on how to do that how to take that leap of faith and leave corporate because like I I said a little bit earlier corporate is such a safe space and what you did was you turned your passion into your business it's now an income for you it's now something that you live off Yes. And you don't need corporate anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Lulu, you know, we're in this gorgeous home and we will give you guys at home a little bit of a tour of a little of a few things. But I'd like to hear from you, Lulu. What was the most difficult part for you? Like what was hard? Was there was anything hard like to uh, achieve, accomplish in this home? Um, you know, uh, coincidentally or incidentally, this was probably one of my easier homes. Really? Um, I've had the relationship with the client for many, many years. Me and him have been um, friends for many years. In actual fact, funny story, I was his client when I was in corporate oh, before wow. he was my client. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so we've got a lot of history. And so I know him personally, mm. which made getting uh, getting uh, elements of his lifestyle, getting elements of his uh, easy. passions mm. quite easy. Mm. But in the same breath, it also does, uh, it also, also teaches you to rein yourself in and not be over familiar with right. somebody's space because it's not mine yeah. even if i know him it's still his yeah. um but no this house was a, really? a, a joy to do i mm. love doing homes for loved ones i love it because my heart then can really outpour into mm. the space and there's a little bit of a modern take to the home why did you choose to go down that route the client is very young, mm. he's very urban, uh, mm. he's an entrepreneur as well, he loves to entertain and so a sort of contemporary modern space was really right up his alley. Mm. Um, as you can see there's a lot of, it's, it's a male space so there's a lot of dark tonalities right. uh, but in a very in a very light, airy, mm. airy manner and so really that, that speaks to contemporary rights, to contemporary spaces right um, in the middle and so um, it just it lends itself and also the architecture of the space right really really um lends itself to that to that mm. design um aesthetic right what is your favorite before i even ask about the, your favorite room what is your favorite piece do you have like a yes <laughs> yes <laughs> let's see um the staircase please will you showcase it the staircase okay. has a beautiful mm. uh solomon omokoye piece mm-hmm. He is my favorite artist. I'm you obsessed with him. Me. And uh-huh. my client is obsessed with art as a whole. Nice. Um, he's a collector. And so that's another part of why this house was such a dream to mm. do because the collection of the art pieces was a beautiful add to making the space beautiful. That staircase piece. Mm. Number a one. A dream. A dream. <laughs> Are you going to have that in your own place? Oh, girl. I need oh. the chankuras <laughs> first. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you're definitely going to be supporting that artist 100%. and getting some of that in your house. 100%. <laughs> and then your favorite space, um, your favorite room. Um, uh, I'm, I'm known as the bedroom whisperer. So oh, really? I'm very good at bedrooms. <laughs> I really love uh, the bedroom in this home. But I also, every single room you'll notice that has a little bit of a thematic element to it. Nice. So there's a beautiful color theme to mm. all the rooms, mm. which was also quite quirky and fun for us to do. Um, and so... While the bedroom is my favorite of the rooms, yeah. all the rooms have something a little bit special because they all carry something different mm, in them. Mm. That's beautiful. And again, this home is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. you spoke, I read your bio, and what a beautiful bio. Your story, absolutely amazing, inspiring to say the least. But you talk about how what you do changes lives. I really, really believe so. Mm, explain I that really to me. believe so. I think the environment we stay in and the space we encompass is very important for our psyche. It's mm. very important for our, our, for our every day. Mm. Um, and while a lot of people don't, might, may not believe that changing the structure of your lounge or changing the color of your walls um, has a massive effect on your livelihood, for me, it is life-giving. It's critical. Um, color has psychology. Mm. Um, the type of space that you sp stay in has, has feeling, creates feeling, creates emotion, helps with feeling and emotion. Different rooms need different colors. Different rooms need different, sp different looks and feels mm. in order to give you a, sp a specific type of, of emotion and to help you. Right. And so for me, it changes lives because it gives you happy endorphins, mm. but it also changes lives because certain changes that you can make to your space can truly have a massive effect mm. on your psyche. And you're literally doing that for people, right? And I want to find out from you, how do you, con how would you, how do you plan on achieving that after every home that you've been to? Um, you're obviously in the home for a while. You know, it takes a few weeks. I don't know how long. How long does it take? Uh, it does, and, obviously depends on the size. Yes, correct. But a general home takes about three months to, to, wow. to start and finish from end to end um, and it's a very collaborative effort because it's not my space it's mm. very hard I won't lie to you you're mm. right sometimes I leave homes <laughs> and I want to come back all the time mm. because I've thrown a lot of my heart into mm. those spaces um, but it's a very collaborative effort and the people that live in that space really need to feel like it's their home so I right. don't um, create spaces for myself right I create spaces for the people that live in it and so mm. their personalities the things that they love we make sure that we incorporate a lot of those things mm. in those spaces so that when they walk in and I reveal their home and I hand over their keys, they feel like, oh my God, how did Lulu make this my space without right. me actually getting mm. any of the items myself? And it's, it's stunning. Yeah. And I like that you, you say, and you're so passionate and you, obviously you believe that. And I believe it too, because just walking into this home today, you know, it lifted me. The energy was lifted and there's a mood and a feeling to it. You're right. Colors are so important and the psyche behind that. I solely believe in that. But I want to find out, let's go back, right? So before you even enter a home, mm. what is the type of research you do okay. to, you know, fulfill the goal of the client? Okay. So it's really, again, about understanding the, the, the living conditions of the of the of the tenants of the home or the owners of the home um, it's understanding how long they they plan to stay in the home some people are mm. new home owners um, and so they want to move into their homes completely done up and uh, looking beautiful some people have been living in that space for a long time and they're trying to sort of up, up, upgrade it and make it mm. look better and so it's understanding the intention behind what it is that they, they they're doing it's understanding what are their loves and the things that they want to keep and preserve in the home and the things that they're happy to take away mm. and and then really it's about sitting in their space. So we do a lot of walking about, yeah. sitting in the space, understanding, you know, how does the how does the client flow mm. from one room to another, from one space to another in the home? Mm. You've used a lot of words that were echoed so much through my life, sitting in the space, the intention, what is the intention? And that's so important because these are words and things that we actually need to find out from our clients. I want to go to first time home buying experiences, right? Because obviously you've designed a lot of first time home buyers' yes. homes and I, let me tell you a little bit about me. If I were to get my first home now, I would not know what I want. Have you ever gotten a client where they're like, I don't know, just do your thing? Yes, my favorite type of client. Really? <laughs> Please come and do my home. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> love those clients. <laughs> um, yes, you do. You uh -huh. do have. Listen, uh, we have a vast mm. um, array of, of clients. There are those who say, I don't know what I want. Make it look beautiful. Here's the key. I'll come back in three months time. Oh. You have those that want you to show you want you to show them mm. every single item you buy from a flower, from wow. a, a, a glass, from every single item. Um, and then you have those that just really want to walk the journey with you. Mm. And so we we cater to all of them. But um, new homeowners, I tend to find really have 
because this uh, their home is the, is now their new dream come right. true. They really have a lot of dreams that they've packed away mm. on Pinterest. They've packed <sighs> away on, you know, they've sent messages to their <laughs> My entire wife. home and wedding is on Pinterest. Exactly. Let me tell you that. <laughs> exactly. And so it's not hard to get their dreams mm. um, pulled out of them. Mm. And then really it's just about making those dreams come true in a practical, affordable, as well as, you know, realistic manner. right yeah so we talk about first time home buyers and how obviously you're gonna do your own home because i know you're on that journey yes oh my god really yes, tell yes. us about that i really want to know about that because i feel i'm so ready. scary really <laughs> so scary so i mean we have done so many homes for first time mm. home owners um but the the technicalities and the background process you know, of buying yeah. the house is so much more um complicated and nuanced than mm. just making a home beautiful. Yeah. If it was just about me getting a key and making it beautiful, so easy. <laughs> yeah. um, but there's just a lot of, there's a lot of education that one needs mm. um, to get into when they're buying a home. And we, uh, we have had to go through that very educational process. Mm. Um, we've had to do a lot of, a lot of um, work in making sure that we understand the nuances and the legalities around buying a home. But it's a beautiful journey. It really, really yeah. is because it's a dream realized. Of course. Yes, yeah, so Lulu, so we spoke about your home ownership or you, you, and, you know, you're well on your way. What has been the hardest part? I know you said it's scary, but what has been the most difficult part thus far? Um, I think the engagement with the banks has mm. been quite tricky because you obviously need to be negotiating uh, the right rates for you. And I really am a huge fan of uh, mortgage brokers. I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Speak your truth. Uh, but I find that they can they help a lot with um, mm. really getting the best rates from a bond from a bond rate perspective. Mm. Um, you know, when, when banks speak to us as individuals, it can be quite tricky and mm. um, they can be quite uninterested in, in, in helping you get those best rates. But the, 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 the brokers know exactly what you need to do mm. and they know also how to, to, to chat to these banks in order right. to, to help you get that. And and then obviously it's just like getting the right space and mm. picking the right home. Right. No home is going to give you exactly what you want in, in totality. And so you really need to have the top picks of the things that you really find to be very important to you. Mm. And then, you know, when there's one or two things that are not right, you can, compromise, you need yeah. to compromise. There's no such thing as a, a perfect space. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. Right. There's close to perfection. Mm. But there is Jay that until Lulu comes and you know makes <laughs> it perfect. Come. Yeah, I think you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Under my knee, I finally understand what you do. Um, I wanted to ask you so because you know this is the first time home buyer show, and I love that you're giving us um, a lot of information about what steps have been easier for you and what has been hard for you. And of course, it is different for everyone. But what advice would you give another first time home buyer who's in the same process, in the same phase, you know, who just feels maybe demotivated and they would just want to give up because it gets tiring, it, does. it takes it a does. lot. Um, start looking and start getting your paperwork and all your, your, your things in place. Uh, make sure that you've got your, you know, your, your bond application uh, documentation, make sure your banking situation is top notch, mm, check your credit scores. scores. <laughs> Important. <laughs> uh, make sure you've got all of that stuff in order. Um, as you're looking for the home so that by the time that you find your home mm. you can green light everything at the same time mm. Mm. and that, I think that's so important just to make the the pros the journey a little bit easier for Correct. you right Correct. now does Lulu know what she's gonna do in her own home do you already know like do you see the vibes of the home Babes, What's happening? I've got a vision ah! <laughs> I've got nice. a vision um, obviously yeah I've been um, luckily the home that we're buying is a home that we've lived in for a while and so we've had the opportunity to look at the things that we don't want. Mm. We've had the opportunity to um, really uh, start building a, a proper a vision. Uh, we call it our vision 2024. Mm. Oh, so nice. we've got the vision to do what we need to do to make it our dream, 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 right. dream home. So you spoke about, you know, you said you know what you want, you know what you don't want. What are five things that are key? Because you said, you know, some homes, it's not going to be perfect. 100%. There are going to be th five things that are key that this home must have for you. Light. Uh -huh. I'm big on light. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, it's so strange. The position of the sun is important to me. Yeah. Um, so light is, is really important. Natural light that is. Yeah. Um, a good kitchen because my husband is a chef, so he needs to make sure that the kitchen nice. is good. We never, we've never gotten a perfect kitchen, but really? it has to be good enough for us to be able to do what we need to do with it. Um, a big size, well-sized bathrooms. Mm. Um, 
cupboard space yes. important. <laughs> I have a lot of shoes. Yeah. So cabinet space very very important and then just the sizable garden we're, we're people who like to entertain etc so we need mm. to be outside and so a sizable space um, from an exterior perspective is so important I agree I think you, you know even like just your top three are so pivotal even for me looking for a first home these are important things and you being an interior designer being an entrepreneur being a powerful woman um, let's not leave that out would you say that it's made your journey finding your first home easier just because you already have your vision of what it's going to look like inside um i think it's made our sourcing of the home journey mm -hmm. easier because like you said we know what we want right. we've got the things that we, we need in a home um but it also has it, the the pros the, the buying process the technicalities of it have really been an eye-opener and a little mm. bit of like a, oh girl you don't know as much as you think you do <laughs> um and so it's it's a little bit of a little bit of both right yeah. we've been talking to a lot of powerful women and i want to talk about leadership among women are you as lulu currently doing anything as a leader i feel like you're a leader in this industry of interior designing to inspire other young up-and-coming interior designers such an important question and you're very right um, it's as women um, as entrepreneurs as leaders in in whatever spaces we are we're in it's so critical that we we're ensure that we're doing something to charter the way forward for those behind us um, in our little way at Namasaya we really really do try to make sure that um, we inspire but more moreover we we're engaging with with women and girls who are trying to get into the space as well there's so much need to to make sure people understand that it actually is possible. It's sitting right here. Yeah. It's hard. Mm. It's not easy, but it is possible. 100%. And that is that. That's the one thing. Um, I think even in my engagement with clients, even in my engagement with the general public, when we're talking, you know, on Instagram, wherever, I really, I really want people to see that it's possible, but it's real. It's a real experience. It's not, mm. it's not the fancy experience you see on top billing only. There's a lot of realness behind mm. it, um, and that's what we we, we like to, to showcase. Um, uh, yeah, and you're living proof. I'm here. Yeah. I am living. You know, one hundred. You uh, and I think what's so important just to add to that is uh, our journey and. The, the race we've ran and the race we're currently running also plays a part in, in, in our own success and what we're willing to do or trying to achieve. And I read a little bit of an article where you said that your parents shaped you and molded you to be the woman that you are today. And I want to talk about how you plan on doing that going forward. For so both my, my parents are entrepreneurs. Mm. And my dad, a chosen entrepreneur, my mom, circumstantial entrepreneur. Mm. Very important to see both both types of entrepreneurship because when you when you when you choose to, to, to run the race, it, it it strengthens you and it makes yeah. you you know it makes you um, it makes you uh, deal with the blows mm. quite easily. But when sometimes you're placed in a position where you have to be an entrepreneur, it can be quite difficult, but you still forge forward. And so I've had the privilege, and I call it a privilege because mm. I believe entrepreneurship is the way of the future. Right. Um, I've had the privilege of having both my parents show showcase what the reality of entrepreneurship mm. is. Um, I, I find, I tend to find that there's a lot of um, making nice of the journey. Um, but when you see two people that you love dearly go through the process, the, mm. the wins are super exciting, but also the blows mm. are super painful and it's good to get that perspective. Mm. And both of your parents went through the same journey, but with different, the motivation behind it Correct. was different. Correct. And you got to witness that. Correct. What is your motivation behind your... Passion mm -hmm. and choice. Nice. Um, and when I say choice, it's a little bit of a, a catch-22 because at some point I just couldn't, I couldn't live with the passion anymore and continue mm. in corporate, even though corporate was so easy. I was, mm. you know, a star employee. I was doing what needed to be done. I was, you know, running the rat race. But sometimes the spirit tells you where you need to, to go. And right. that's exactly how I felt with mine. So my motivation, I'll really say, was very much spirit led mm. um, and very much passion led. Nice. I like that. I wanted to ask you a little bit because you said you believe that entrepreneurship is the way of the future. But let's let's stick to your industry, and I know that what you're doing at your company, Namasaya, right, is continuing to inspire young black women, which I love. What is your hope for young black women in the future? Sure. So many. How mm, much longer do I we know. have? Do we have time? <laughs> um, oh, God. So... I really, really, like I said, mm. it's really first and foremost for me for me to be able to show show people and, and, and females that it is possible. Mm. I think 
um, we, 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 we grow up with a narrative that entrepreneurship is a male dominated space. Um, and it's a and it's a space that uh, needs you to be uh, rugged and hard. Yeah. No, no, yeah. you can have a face beach. You can have nice hair. Yeah. You can do you can do it all being feminine. Yeah. And I think that's that's a big a big piece that I really am passionate about. Mm. But also, your passion can become a, a, a career. Of course, that's a big one for me. You Living can proof. make correct. You can yeah. make a career out of your passion. It, it is possible. Mm. Um, and then the third one, the third one, and and a really important one is that. With all of that that I've just said, yeah. it also takes a lot of work. Ooh, it yeah. takes a lot of sleepless yeah. nights. You have to be ready to put in the, the work. work. You really, really, really do. It's not pop and flay. Yeah, we can't hard. be lazy in this. <laughs> no. You're so right. Yeah, no. uh, taking on because you're taking on the role of a lot of things in corporate. You have people who do certain Correct. things. Correct. You are now doing all of that. Tatazonke. You are Correct. doing. You are Correct. doing all of that. I love that so much, and I want to talk about because. You're on your journey, buying your home, you're ready to create the space, like you said, when coming in and how important every little detail is. You're creating this comfortable space where you feel at ease. You're on your journey to do that. What would you say is your driving force behind generational wealth for you? And financial freedom. Mm, babes. Mm. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want it. <laughs> uh, island trips to Bora Bora. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, it's, I want to be able to give my kids mm. the ability to live out their dreams without the worry the fin mm. of financial muscle. Not that we want to build them to be lazy individuals, but having uh, financial muscle allows you to explore your dreams and your passions yeah. a lot easier. Mm. And so the reason we are trying to build gener generational wealth and the reason for us legacy wealth is so important is so that right. we can have our children and grandchildren. My husband always says he wants to be able to to manage his grandchildren's lives without worry at all. Right. And so it's a really around building that legacy and ensuring that our children, children's children, their children, um, are in a position where they can live out their passions mm. um, and build their dreams without the worry of having, you know, to pay yeah. bills because those bills really make it difficult to live out those dreams. <laughs> That's very true. It's it's heavy. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm sure there are young, upcoming interior designers or maybe someone who is in university not sure which road to take, right? Not sure if they should study this. Not sure if it can sustain them in the long run. Whatever the case may be, you know, as young adults, I feel like we're juggling so much. Do I stick to corporate? Do I also do what Lulu did and take that leap of faith? So just to close off the show, if you can leave us with a little bit of words of wisdom, um, especially for young people who watch the show, someone who is afraid to do what you did, and like we spoke about the different entrepreneurs that you get and what motivates them. Someone who lacks, not even lacks motivation, someone who, we all have our down days, right? There are probably days where you're like, I have to get this out, I have to do this, no one else is gonna do it for me. I, I run the show, I need to do it, but then that day you just, you don't have the capacity to do it. So if you can just leave us and close off with some words of wisdom for young, upcoming interior designers, home buyers, whatever the case may be. Um, I used to have a boss who used to use the term for us, uh, Lulu, go ahead, go on ahead and fail forward. That's what he used to say. Um, and I've, I've kept that and I've done that with everything that I've done. Mm. Take time. Firstly, it's so important to take time to understand what your spirit says to you. So mm. take the time, particularly those of you who are in matric grade 11, take the time to really understand oneself. And it's very hard to know what your passion is in matric and grade 11. Trust yeah. me, I understand. <laughs> but as even you're studying, take time to understand what the, what the trigger points for your joy are. Um, and create those trigger points within the working environment you're in. So that does not mean particularly entrepreneurship. It can be in corporate, it can be in civil service, it can be in entrepreneurship. Mm. But make time to make sure that those those passion points within those spaces yeah. are honed and you're taking care of those so so important mm -hmm. and then for those of you that are at the precipice just waiting to become entrepreneurs but are very very frightened fail forward jump in you will <laughs> see forward i'm kidding um plan very yeah. important to plan save mm. save save you'll find that a year's worth of salary will mm. run like this so you've yeah. gotta save Mm. Um, but if you can't plan as much as you can 
and then just jump in and mm. and throw yourself in anything. Fail you forward. Do. Fail Might forward. just make that the title <laughs> of the show. Fail forward. <laughs> I want to just close up with something because I always have this debate amongst myself and a few friends. I've been solely believers because I, I I too am an entrepreneur. I solely believe that no art is new art. So nothing has not been done before. 100. So I love what you said about plan, save. And another crucial point is research. All of these things have been done before and I do believe that it's, you know, it's, it gives you that little, what do you call it, like a diving board to then fail forward <laughs> and then just do the things. Thank you so much, Lulu. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to join us and educate us more about this. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you to our viewers at home for tuning in. As you know, we are live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys again next week. Take care and stay warm.